Point that thing someplace else. Plan podcast. My name is Jedi Master David, and with me as always is Darth Austin. Hello, everyone. Everyone, get ready <clears throat> for the greatest podcast of all time, the All Raylo Podcast. Seriously, you can do this yourself if you want to. Oh, come on. You don't want a little bit of, uh, you know, Ray on Kylo action in the new film? Do you Google that stuff? No. As a matter of fact, I actually hate it as well. <laughs> I don't know. His face wasn't very straight when he said that. Oh, goodness. I think he's lying. Don't look at his Google history. Google history. Delete. That's why I delete. Delete all the cookies. Mm-hmm. All of the cookies need deleted after every usage. <laughs> no, 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 no. We are a reread podcast. We are now in Onslaught, or well, Dark Tide 1 Onslaught of the New Jedi Order. Uh, this week, we're going to go over chapters three and four. Um, <clears throat> this book has a lot of smaller chapters, as we've kind of already talked about. And uh, chapter three, pretty meaty. Chapter four, kind of garbage. I'm just going to say that ahead of time because I just really didn't care about it as much. I don't know if we want to keep trying to name the chapters, but I say we should name chapter three. Yay, finally, Jedi stuff. <laughs> yeah, and then chapter four... Oh, whiny stuff. It's all my fault. Okay. It's all my fault, even though we're past Mis- this. We'll call it misplaced blame. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, anyway. How's your week going, Jedi Council? How's your week going? Oh, going great. It's actually going great. I'm not even being sarcastic. I, I know, know I always sound sarcastic, <laughs> but that's a Sith trait that I can't really help. It's true. Starting a new job in a couple weeks, and... Finally yep. beat Spyro last Yeah, he finally became a Chippendales dancer. That's right. And, uh, yeah, Spyro's good, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Fish, I had, like, ten minutes before I had to leave for work. I'm like, oh, well, I just, unlo- I just unlocked the last world. I'm, I've am i got Nasty Nork to fight. And this is the, 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 no, fir- the first game. Right. Okay, yeah. So I, haven't that, even, I haven't even gotten back into it. I haven't, you know, I haven't had right. a chance. Well, I forgot how easy it is to beat that game because literally, yeah. literally 10 minutes before my shift, I'm like, oh, there's no way I can do it, but I'll just, and it's done. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the thing is, like, when we were originally playing it, it was challenging because we were kids, but now There are still uh, parts of that game that's challenging. Yeah, I've had to YouTube some of the Mainly because of the darn location. camera. They're not talking about Star Wars. Yeah, it's Star Wars Spyro. It's <laughs> we never talk about Star Wars in Council. Not, yeah, not really. I mean, I that's mentioned Celebration every now yeah. and again, which coincidentally... Yeah, I'm going to Celebration in April. How about you? No. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah, they're slowly they're slowly trickling through some of the um some of the people that are going to be showing up. They obviously haven't announced any of the the heavy hitters yet, but I you know, like Peter May. The, the last email I got was like, you know, some of the standards, a lot of the voices of uh, uh Donald Faison. You remember him from Scrubs? Mm, Turk. What- was that Turk? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he voiced a character in uh, Resistance Rebels. I don't know. One of the two. Mm. I, I haven't really, to be honest, I, I'm still not well versed in the cartoon series, but he's going to be there. Peter Mayhew, obviously, he's, he's usually trucking around those sort of things still pretty reliably. The kid who played young Boba mm. actually yeah. saw him at, uh, at the um, uh, Comic Con in Columbus. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't, it, it, a lot of, a lot of voices, um, just a lot of voice actors are going to be there, which, which is o- always cool. Um, uh, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but the voice of Ahsoka, uh, she, she's, she's actually really neat. Uh, she's done some events around here, but she's also going to be there. There's a lot, there's a lot of different people, Ashley Eckerstein or something or something mm. like that. So anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so there's some Star Wars, but yeah, aside from that, you know, my week's been, uh, <clears throat> it's been a week. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, nothing special. I just, not quite yet. No, you know, it's only I Thursday. Kind of wake up in the morning, uh, you know, get ready for work. I work. I come home. I eat. I fall asleep on the couch for an hour or two. I wake up. I try you and watch work Twitch. out. Uh, well, that yeah, that was actually kind of interesting. They've um, <clears throat> for those of you who are Twitchers, and I'm not a Twitcher. I just like to watch some channels on there. But they've been streaming like these uh, Shaw Brothers uh, kung fu movies, <clears throat> and I watched one last night. So there's another uh, creator, content creator. Um, he started on YouTube. It was J- Djibouti Dubs. You've watched those. We've watched plenty of. Plenty of the dub overs of like infomercials. Copper chef. Yeah. <laughs> which, funny enough, we both have copper, actual copper pans now, uh, which is funny. And every time that I use them, it sparkles just like in the <laughs> yeah. infomercial. <laughs> no. But, uh, but so for this stream, you can watch like the live stream. They've just back to back kung fu movies, and they're incredibly cheesy, but I kind of enjoy that. Are you playing Pokemon? You're a gym. Oh. I can spin and get Pokeballs. Yeah, my, my and, house and is And piss like a off gym all your neighbors when I knock them out of oh, the gym. <laughs> so, yeah, that's all he comes here for is just to play at the gym. Exactly. But, and I, my work is, too. You think I get oh a lot of work God. done right now? Jeez. I put my two weeks in, I've got a gym. You think I'm doing anything? That's horrible, man. Um, what was I saying? Djibouti. Oh, yeah. So, anyway... <laughs> <laughs> Djibouti. You, you, can, you can tell you can tell who's the older one here. Obviously, the memory's gone. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, they've been doing dub overs of these uh, of these uh, kung fu movies. And the one couple nights ago was uh, was hilarious. It the movie alone was hilarious, but their their comment overs was was even better because like the the main villain was like this uh, <clears throat> supposed to be this demon. So the movie was called Bat Without Wings. Which might be the most epic title of anything uh, ever. I suppose, which is basically just a rat, yeah, when you think about it. Much. A blind no, it's rat. No, it's a bat without wings. It's a blind rat. So anyway, um, the bat without wings is like this kung fu master who wears like Gene Simmons ca- uh, kiss makeup. And he has like the top knot, like Gene Simmons kind of did. So anyway, whenever he'd show up on screen, they'd just start playing... Uh want to rock and roll all night. Just not, in the background, you know? <laughs> not trying to interrupt. Have you ever seen that picture of a dog dressed as Gene Simmons in Kiss? Uh, and it's him in with the group Kiss. I think so, And yeah. it has the caption, three months in, they still have no idea I'm a dog. <laughs> <laughs> God. Yeah, but anyway, no, that's that's been kind of fun. But yeah, that's been really the highlight of the week. Really not much going on. I'm thinking about... Uh, Going out and maybe just doing a little overnight camping thing on Saturday, though. Oh, yeah? Where? Uh, uh, probably just out on buddy's land, you know, mm. really. Okay. Um, but, yeah, that's that's it's, it's been a boring week. It's just a boring week heading into February and, you know, looking forward to it. We, well, we've actually had decent weather here. We have. A lot, lot better. A lot better. I well, washed except the truck. for the... I washed the truck, too. That was big news. I did today, too. <laughs> I know, we're so excited. <laughs> we're exciting. Well, seeing as we've uh, dulled your lives with all of our Jedi Council, you want to go They're still not and... talking about Star Wars. Yeah, you want to go ahead and talk some Star Wars, do a little Holonet? There's no Star Wars news. Moving on. <laughs> <clears throat> well, honestly, there really wasn't. You know, we watched the Super Bowl in our last episode. We had talked about the potential for a trailer drop, and there wasn't. And, and to be honest, I didn't expect there to be. But, they, yeah, there's always the hope. Uh, there was, however, some... Um, chatter on reddit about a possible title for episode nine and drum roll that's probably it's probably blew, not going to pick probably up blew, blew, blew out everybody's earphones <laughs> the balance of the force you don't like the force balanced generic uh, yeah, I, I don't. I don't really know uh, about all that uh, balance of the force. An actual balancing the force. I think you could take that so many different ways, and and everyone's dead. Yeah, but I, I mean, in all <laughs> honesty, when you think about it, the force is balanced. There's one yeah. Jedi and one Sith right yeah. now. So there doesn't need to be a movie. We're done. We're done with Star <laughs> Wars. Okay. If you want to talk about actual balance, but yeah, kind of a. <clears throat> it's obviously that's not going to be the title. I. I if that was the title, I'd be entirely like just blown away. But 
that there won't might be, the be title. another though. There could another. be another. Yeah, the well, little, that's always possible. The little boy who picks up the broom with the force. Well, there was there was also <laughs> in this in this article I was reading, just fanboy stuff, but <laughs> son of darkness. Is that what they're calling Kylo? I don't know. It's just like just saying that you know, what if the title were Son of Darkness? Son of Darkness. Is that how about not? How about we find a good title? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of kind of dumb. I'm not good at naming anything. How about Grandpa issues. Oh God. <laughs> well, uh, Daddy issues, Mommy issues. He's just got issues. He ain't got no issues with Daddy. Daddy dead. Well, that's true. But it tears him up inside. The darkness inside me. The thing I did that I didn't need to do that served no purpose hurts me. Uh-huh. I did it. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Both the titles suck. I, I, I'm not good at naming anything. My first pet was a guinea pig. <laughs> Guess what his name was? Guinea. Pig. <laughs> I was very original. I'm I was thinking just... about getting a guinea pig, by the way. How was your experience with that? Mine just sort of sat around, tipped over its food bowl, stayed, stood on top of it when it was hungry, squeaked every now and again. It was pretty chill. How how many years did it do that? Well, mine lasted about seven years, which is long for a guinea pig. Good I God. think their life expectancy. They're not talking about Star Wars. <laughs> now we're talking about guinea pigs in the news section. The dark side of the guinea pig. Guinea pig Sith Lords. The balance of the guinea pig. <laughs> anyway... So yeah, names aside, I, I I'm not good at naming anything. Do you you have any potential names you want to throw out there? For the movie Guinea Pigs, <laughs> Guinea. Episode, episode nine, Guinea Star Wars Episode Nine, the Guinea, Guinea Pig. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I don't know. I just know that I want this movie to end with part one. <laughs> Won't happen. I know. Yeah, I, I know, but it won't happen. Return of the Jedi. I don't know. I don't think that would be hey, a good idea. A New Hope. That sounds like a good one. No, something about striking back. The for the force. The resistance aw- strikes back. <laughs> the for the force more than awakens. <clears throat> the force awakens. The force the needs for- five more minutes. <laughs> the, the force strikes back. <laughs> Uh, Luke's the a force. Reve- no, no, no. Revenge of the Force. Yeah. <laughs> Episode nine. Luke's a Force ghost. <laughs> That's it. Just Luke's a Force. <laughs> no, I think it needs to be Episode nine. Well, now Luke's a Force ghost. Yeah, oh, this guy had the wet. Well, <laughs> attack, uh, attack of the Force. Attack of the Force. I like the Phantom Force Miss. The Phantom. There we go. Uh, Force Wars. That'd be sweet. That's actually not that bad. It could be Force like Wars. Avengers, Infinity War. Yeah, but there's not enough million Jedi. Jedi. There's not enough Jedi and or Sith Jedi. for that. Time well, anyway, skip. time skip. Yeah, let's go ahead and or, pop. Or how about this episode nine, The Old Republic? Oh God, <laughs> everyone's That'd be fun. wiped out. Anyway, go back start again. Let's go ahead and knock off, and we'll uh, we'll start on the reread. So, we're gonna go uh, through chapter three and four. Chapter three again was was had a lot of fun stuff in it. Chapter four was just kind of honestly, I didn't care about it, and it honestly it, it just kind of irritated me more than than what it added into the story. I don't know about what your take is, but we can we'll, we can kind of talk talk. I about just want to one thing did it irritate you more than the end of book one. Uh, more really because I already had it in book one. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I was yeah, fi- I was fine I with that. book one ending that way, but yeah, I mean, having to rehash again. I hate rehashing stuff. I think people rehash things too much. You know, it's like at work. Just make a decision and then be done with it. It's it's just a reminder of the mood. He's <laughs> what in. are they talking about? They haven't even read the chapter yet. So How about anyway. we just talk about chapter three? Chapter three. And you guys read chapter four and tell us what you think. <laughs> yeah. So chat we'll ignore you. <laughs> so so what was our unofficial name? Chapter three. Oh my god, Jedi! Finally, four stuff. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so we open up here. Luke Skywalker stood at the edge of the grove, allowing Yavin 4. I've heard of that before. I've heard of that planet. 
The Avonforce light breeze to tease and snap the corner of the dark cloak that shrouded him. Dark cloak? That's a Sith thing. <laughs> in, the, <laughs> uh, in the circular opening of the grove stood a number of gray plinths. plinths. I have no idea how plinths. to pronounce that. I read that five times. Plinths. I just can't accurately say it. It automatically gives you a lisp. Yeah. Really? Well, it's like, a, I can't say rear wheel. Rear wheel? Quickly. I can't say it quickly. How do you say it when you say, do it quickly? Say it quickly. Rear wheel. No, I have to say stop it quickly. Think, no, I'm not going to because it sounds ridiculous. It all just meshes in these. Say rear again. wheel drive. Nope, not going to do it. Oh. So anyway, in the circular opening with gray plimps, one... <laughs> oh, one you each can say that now. Okay. ...serving <laughs> as a memorial for fallen Jedi students... Oh, Gantorus. What do you think? Gantorus. Gantorus. Had been the first, then Nikos Mar, then Cray Migla. Mingla. Ming, yeah. Mingla. Mingla. And Dorsk. Or Mingla. And Dorsk 81. What the hell? 81. Is that, is that like a robot or so? Did they. Did I they, wish. Did they. Uh... <laughs> or there's, eight, there's 81 generations of the Dorsk clan. They, they, they lost their favorite. Their favorite astromech. I'm sure somebody's. I remember who Dorsk is. He was super cool, or she was super cool. Well, obviously Don't assume. not, because he's dead. Well, I guess not. Others had followed them, and now the latest. Poor Miko. Miko. But Wooth is alive, so there's that. <laughs> they finally mentioned it. They did. They. Uh, he's here. He's actually here. And we're reading ahead. Well, yeah. So essentially, like Luke is. Um, Dedicating a memorial to to Miko, which is you know their their custom here to honor fallen Jedi, which oh, touching, so touching, so it's good. Touching. Nah, it's good. It's good though. Um, but there's a little bit more going on here because there's going to be a meeting of some uh, some Jedi, and we also get to meet a new character, Corn Horn. Corn Horn. <laughs> yeah, I need to take that somewhere horrible. I didn't take it anywhere. I just said it fast. Yep. We're not going to be putting one of these memorials there for Mara, you know. Yep. Defiant, Luke. Do it. That isn't what I was thinking, Corin. 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 What do we want to do? Corin? Coran. Coran? Uh, Coran? Yeah. Coran Actually, Horn. Yeah, that makes more sense. I'm from Ohio. Maybe not at the moment. <laughs> Hold my corn. But it had been corn lurking corn. there somewhere. Pops for me every time I look at this place since I heard dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> but there won't be a marker for her there. Luke arched his eyebrow at him. That could be taken two ways, you know. Okay, so. Period. Did, <laughs> did, you, did you seem to notice that, like, Luke and... Luke and Coran, they they kind of got a little bro bro thing going, don't they? Yeah. They're they're definitely bros, especially in the fifth <laughs> chapter. But we won't jump ahead. <clears throat> Shut your mouth. Oh, that could be taken two ways, you know. One suggests this disease won't kill her. The other, there won't be any Jedi around to plant the marker. Ooh. Oh, chilly, so chilly. The green, the green eyed. I about said the green Jedi. <laughs> The, it's a new Jedi. The green-eyed Jedi nodded. The green Jedi with his blue lightsaber. Yeah, then scratched at his beard. I'm betting on the former, though I know there are lots of folks in the New Republic that wouldn't shed a tear about the second case. Dun dun dun. Unfortunately, true. They were all so young. Ah, uh, Luke. Compared to us, everyone is young. Measured by life events, you should be. What about a thousand years old? There's a, <laughs> there's a William Shatner pause there for you if I've ever heard one. <laughs> Being married tomorrow is slowed that re- process. Please, I please think. Please read the rest of it. I with can't. The- no, that would get super annoying. <laughs> that <laughs> Rocket Man, do Rocket Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, old Shatner. Yeah, but the years she put on me before you finally, before you two finally got together, still count. Before we get any older, I thought you'd want to know. They're all here. Last shuttle came in 10 minutes ago. Kip Duren's on it. He made a grand entrance as always. 
So he's he's uh, he summoned all the Jedi here for a meeting. Uh, obviously, Kip is uh, is gonna be here. Uh, we also mentioned Ganner. I don't know how you would say that. Rysod. 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 Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And our good buddy, Worthy Woo Skidder, the Skidmeister. You, you know, we've been saying Wooth all this time. It's actually Worth. Worth. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I can say what I want. I'm a Jedi Master. Well, that's what they get for not mentioning him for about eight chapters. <laughs> we forget. Yeah. yeah, that's very true. We kind of, we, yeah, we got that one thing, and they didn't really do much of with him past that. But now he's he's back. Uh, let's see here. Where do I want to jump back in? Well, the Jedi Master sailed his anxiety. Anxiety and a long, slow, calming breath. Have you ever just had one of those breaths that was just long, slow, and calming? No, because I live in the real world. <clears throat> anyway, you gotta center yourself, find your balance. I know your concerns, and you're not alone. Force. <laughs> yeah, and in, in expressing them, Cam and Tion. What do you think, Tioni? I like Tion. Tion's good. I don't know. There's an extra E there. I don't know how to pronounce things. Have worried about the academy. Teaching the children here as a group has been good. Opening the older apprentices up to mentoring experiences with other uh, other, other Jedi Knights. The, Jedi. Uh, the utter Knights. Cow Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> has sh- people are probably so angry. Why can't this guy read? Read! Other Jedi Knights had sharpened their skills immeasurably. Of course, that does mean that some of the Jedi Knights who are taken with Kip's proactive view of other of the of order, the utter. yeah, of the order, what, what? view, uh, view, view of the order do end up in Australia. Stri- okay, yeah. so this is actually kind of an important point with Kip because um, Kip is very proactive. Um, instead of reactionary, he's very offensive. You know, whereas the the Jedi and Luke's kind of view, and and even beforehand, were more prote- protectorate. They weren't, you know, go out necessarily and find the trouble. It's more they they were a lot more reactionary and a lot more like kind of like um, had a siege mentality. You know, Kip's like Iron Man, and Luke's like Captain America, and we're about to have an Infinity War. <laughs> I, sure I actually, that bad of an I actually kind of think about it. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know enough Marvel really, but I just, I just always kind of remember like I, Iron Man towards, like Ultron just kind of turning into a little bit of a beep. Mm, yeah, kinda. Anyway, I'm. This is not a Marvel podcast, but I, I say. And I'm talking about Star Wars again. I know there, there is a primary reason I recalled everyone here. And yes, I know the issue to recall lets everyone know who's in charge. Darn right. I may not have been raised on Corellia where this sort of stuff comes naturally, but I am aware of it. So that's another thing. Coran is Corellian. Yeah. Coran's a Corellian. Coran's a Corellian. But you can't say rear wheel? I can't. Not not that <laughs> fast. It's good stuff. That's a C. We're dealing with R's, man. R's and C's are different. <laughs> Oh, let's see here. Good, and you know Kip's choosing to be the last to arrive means he fought you to the last. You caught that? By God. Grant's pretty uh pretty cool guy, honestly. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll we can He's talk. A bro. Yeah, well, he was uh he was in Rogue Squadron. He was a mm-hmm. really good pilot, uh Corellian. Obviously we established that. Um uh, I don't want to say not super strong in the force, but I, I think they make mention of it later. You know, not his telekinetic abilities, not super crazy good. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, he's a Jedi. Mm-hmm. And he kind of, it took him a while to, you know, dedicate himself to the order. I don't remember. I think they it might eventually say that in here, or maybe it was in a later chapter, but. You know, basically, him he, he stayed with Rogue Squadron for a while, and then finally kicked off and said, "Okay, now I'm going to be a Jedi." 
So kind of interesting and older. Older yes. when he was when he was really under Luke, which mm-hmm. uh, is is another common sort of thread. We've we it's not all about younglings. Anymore. Seems like the older ones seem to cling to him more. Yeah, it's it's kind of true. Yeah, the young yeah. ones kind of. I mean, look at Worth. Look at Kip, Jason, Jason, Jason. Yeah, it's true. Oh, uh, let's see. Well, Luke watched Cran for a moment because that's what Luke does. Then smiled, bros. <laughs> when Coran had first come to the academy to train as a Jedi to save his wife, Mirex Tarek. Sure. They really had to make they, they make mention of names here. They can, they will not let a name go mm-hmm. ambiguous. He'd been willful and willful and arrogant. All the things Luke expected out of a fighter pilot and a law enforcement officer. And a, a Corellian. And, and a person. <laughs> And somebody with green eyes. And a green guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Through the process of learning, I'm just making up history as I go. Through the process of learning what it, what it was to become a Jedi, however, Cran had matured and changed. While it wasn't until peace with the Empire some six years earlier that he had resigned from Rogue Squadron to become a full-time Jedi, the Jedi philosophy and demands had become fully integrated into his life. So yeah, there it was. I was just getting ahead of myself. So it take him a while. Basically, yeah. you know, the Empire had to fall, you know, before he finally... But Corellia and the Empire, that's that's a touchy mm-hmm. thats a touchy thing. Kind of makes you wonder if he had maybe started out as an Imperial. Uh, uh, you wings. know, I didn't read enough into his backstory for right now. Um, I don't think... I, I, I want to say I don't think so, but, like, Corellia was pretty ravished. Obviously, we saw that a little bit more reinforced in solo, mm-hmm. but it was a shipbuilding planet. I mean, they, they built ships. So it, would it surprise me? No, but I, I, I feel like, I feel like if I tap in the memory banks, I feel like no, but you, Hey, you can all correct me, which reminds me for a cheap plug. If you haven't already connected with us on Facebook, make yeah. sure you go like the hey, Facebook talk and to me on Facebook messenger. You seem very needy. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, if you'd like to uh, discuss a chapter, uh, tell me how bad my rereads are and how bad our hot takes are, you can go ahead and, uh, you know, leave us a kind, super kind message with Facebook and we can read it nice. on the podcast and totally disregard it. No, no, we, we do want to hear from you. We had uh, one of our listeners uh, you know, a couple weeks ago send something in, which was really cool. Uh, you can also send us an email at tcplanpodcast@gmail.com. And also check our Patreon page. We have our Dinner with the Patron series, which is just a fun little series where we sit down and eat dinner, talk about a vast array of subjects, and uh, you know, just give you a little extra content. So if you want to support the podcast, it's a good place to do it. Back to the reread. Let's <laughs> not talk about Star Wars. <clears throat> well, Star Wars related. It's us related. Good. Well, we are Disney. Now. Shh, don't tell nobody about that. Oh, uh, let's see here. Oddly enough, while Cran had let go of his arrogance, Kip and the others were being dangerously misguided by their pride in being Jedi. This is kind of a theme, though. You know, they're the what was it, the twenty something and however many Avengers? The tw- the dozen plus two. Okay, I was totally off. Dozen plus two <laughs> Avengers, and he kind of talks about that here a little bit. Not defenders. Yeah, well, he's like, you know, why didn't, why didn't they call it Defenders or you know, something like not so probably offensive. trademark issues on that. No. And it, it it does it does bring to light, but I, again, we've kind of already seen that they're the young ones are are quick to snap judgments, and it's the same with Jason, and it's the same with Anakin too. They're they're both quick to judgment. You know, they have a, a vast amount of pride in being a Jedi because there really aren't very many Jedi. Yeah. You know, it's 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 not it. I don't want to say it was super duper common in the old Republic, but there were Jedi. There was a pretty big force of Jedi. Mm-hmm. Now there's really not. There's like a hundred of them. Keep in mind that's only because they don't have the resources to scout for new Jedi. Though it's not Very like there true. are less Force users, just less or people being are trained. There. No, but no, I, it's it's very true. But I mean, you know, they take a lot of pride in that, and that's great. But all the people in this book series just seem so dri- overly driven by their emotions. Mm-hmm. Where's our even keeled guy? Nick. <laughs> well, yeah, it's true. Luke's pretty. And his bro. Yep, Coran. Corn. Corn. 
Corn horn. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> we got Chick Fil A and Corn Horn. We're just making up names as we go, and it's making me hungry. Luke didn't. De- Are you? Like, you're hungry. Did you eat dinner before you came? Come yeah. on, man. get out of here. Because I wasn't sure if we were going to do a deal with patrons. Uh, I should have said something. Luke didn't doubt that the Jedi. I texted probably, you. I was. You uh, did not you, respond to my text. I was asleep on the couch. <laughs> exactly. It wouldn't have mattered. Talk if about I'd said Star anything. Wars. Luke didn't <laughs> doubt that the Jedi probably did find the best solution available in most situations, but the consequences of that solution might be hard for others to take. Obviously, Wooth. Worth. Mm-hmm. Whatever. I'm gonna. Call I'm him. still gonna call him Wooth. <laughs> I like Wooth. Your name should be Wooth. Worth. My name's Worth. Your uh, name's wrong. I'm changing <laughs> it. Ultimately, it would be up to. It would be others who had to live with those results, not the Jedi who caused them. And resentment at high-handed Jedi actions was really inevitable. Very true. So when Luke comes into the room, this was kind of interesting. So you have like the group who is kind of supporting Kip, and then the the group that's more loyal to not Kip to the actual Jedi Order. <laughs> well, I, I yeah, but anyway, so they're standing on either side of the room, and Luke uh, kind of spots this. You know, he's like, "Oh, well, you've already divided yourself unconsciously. Mm-hmm. This is great." Um, and oh. it's not going well because uh, was it about two thirds are with Kip. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to kind of skip past a little bit of the bromance. What do you think? Is there anything you want to mention in here? Because, I mean, they they talk about the old day. Oh, well, yeah, I do want to mention this. So, so Coran has a daughter. Was it? It was a daughter, right? Yeah, it was a daughter. And Luke kind of makes a casual mention. In the old days, all potential Jedi were taken from the families as children to be trained. I can't imagine it was easy even then, though. Um, and that 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 is that was a thing. I mean, they they took them young and mm-hmm. they basically separated them from their families and made, basically made them monks. But in here, you have you have families. You had um, there was there was one mention in here of like, see if I can. Uh, find them, but there was like a husband and wife mm-hmm. uh, duo, and then obviously you know you have Luke and Mara. But uh, I don't know. I, I do you think that's the better way of doing it, or would uh, you know essentially kidnapping children and forcing them to be monks? Do you think that's better? Kidnap. <laughs> yeah, well, you are a Sith. Oh, let's see. Oh yeah, here, here's a little the left side of the room. Her- held herd. Nearly two thirds of the adult Jedi and half of the non humans. On the right side, along with Koran, Luke uh, recognized Stream and several others who had staunchly opposed Kip's stance. The Jedi Master sensed no hatred flowing between the groups, but the level of tension in the chamber was slowly increasing into a blood rush. Hey, man, it's your favorite word. Blood Rush. T-shirt. That'll be for your birthday. I'll make you Blood Rush T-shirt. Do it. We'll sell them. <laughs> we'll sell the crap out of them. Yeah, for our one fan. That's right. Who hasn't talked to us in a month. I'll leave him alone. He's a good guy. Yeah. Let's see here. So, Luke made himself smile at the younger students. I'm glad to see you, here, see you all here. Your bright, shining faces are lit with the Force. <laughs> Okay, you all work hard, and someday you young Jedi will stand here with us as Jedi Knights. I look forward to that day, and I know you do too. Sending them away. Send away the children now. We can be out fighting the bad guys. <laughs> A young Twilik piped. Oh, and then Luke kindly slaps him across the face and says, Get out of here. No, he cut his head off. That's dark. <laughs> That's dark. I wonder why. Good God, what's my name? <laughs> what's my name? Yeah, but uh, but anyway, you know, this is th- this is synonymous with kind of how the young are kind of going. We can fight the bad guys. Well, that's great, but you need to learn a little bit of wisdom before you go out and just start hacking and slashing. Well, the kids marched out and even rose with the eldest helping conduct the youngest down the stairs because they need help with stairs. <laughs> They can use a lightsaber, but stairs are hard. It's tough. 
Well, Luke held his hand out, palms down. Let's see. I know you can't see this because we're not recording it, but I'm just, I, I'm sort of seems like a force lightning thing. <laughs> just hands out, palms down. That sort of feels like Palpatine with his fingers all curled up and like, or, the power. Or Dooku. That's, well, that's true. I think they're the only ones who did it. Okay. Well, here's a speech. We face two very grave problems. Either one of them could destroy the Jedi together. They most certainly will unless we put aside any differences and work together. Kip, perhaps you would share what, you've, what you know of the Yuzen Vong. So this surprise, Kip. But Luke's a lot smarter than these guys, mm-hmm. and they, <laughs> they still <laughs> underestimate him. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Luke, Luke's calling on Kip to kind of take the edge off. He wants to show that, you know, he values Kip's opinion, but at the same token... I'm the master. Yeah. I'm master. I'm letting you know that. And, uh, you know, Kip kind of goes, uh, we ambushed him, Carl colliding with X-Wings, Miko's dead, barely Everybody's escaped my dead. life. And then uh, this is where Luke confuses the young man. What was the most important thing you learned about the Yuzen Vong? I don't understand the question. It's a pretty simple question, I thought, actually. It just all depends on your perspective, but yeah. I just think that's not what he was expecting. True. You said you were ambushed by the Yuzen Vong. How is it that a Jedi Knight is ambushed? And again, this was an important thing that was brought out, that the Yuzen Vong are not necessarily connected to the Force, or they're shrouded from the Force, or they're disconnected from the Force, or there's something wrong with the Force, or they're not Force, or they're not alive. The Force has a bad Wi-Fi signal, (laughs) network error. There we go. (laughs) DOS. DOS had an error. But, um... And there was somebody in here. Uh, I'm probably going to completely blank over it. Oh, yeah, Streen. The old Bespin miner. Very nice to hear somebody from Bespin. Mm-hmm. If they are not connected with the Force, how can they be alive? That's an excellent question. Don't right. ask it again or I'll kill you. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Oh, well, Kip, uh, Kip ever on the offensive. Uh, does put pipe in here. Once again, the New Republic remains blind to the threat, leaving us to deal with it. Now, Coran and Kip actually have a little bit of a back and forth here. Uh, you know, Coran is fiercely loyal to Luke. Uh, Kip is too, but Kip also has his philosophy. Mm-hmm. Coran like is, own. yeah, but he's basically, you know, again, just Luke's the master here. Mm-hmm. You got, you got to, you got to listen to this guy. I do like this little uh, little exclamation. We won't fail. With the Force as our ally and lightsaber as our tools, we'll destroy the Yuzen Vong. It kind of sounds like a bad anime line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like with the poses. Yeah. Like you think he did like a Dragon Ball Z pose thing. I think he ran like a ninja in Naruto <laughs> with his hands back. We <laughs> cannot be defeated. But again... You dealt with the Yuzen Vong. That is the most ignorant thing you could have said, Very knowing true. what you're up against. Well, Jason, step forward. <laughs> because I value his opinion. No, I'm just kidding. Listen to yourself, Kip, and think about what you're saying. Is that? Do you think that would be an accurate voice for Jason? Listen to yourself, <laughs> Kip, and hear what you're saying. That's bad. The, the Yusin Vong are cla- uh, <laughs> camouflaged against our sen- the senses we rely on. They've got armor and weapons that lightsabers can't cut instantly, which is uh, kind of weird. And they're trained warriors. More importantly, if Master Skywalker's thinking is correct, they'll be coming in numbers uh, suitable for conquering a galaxy, even if each of us stands against a thousand of them, we'd, we will be too few. Which is cute, considering he could barely kill five. Well, he didn't kill five. He killed two. <laughs> yeah, well, they're highly trained and mm-hmm. have a lot of weird weapons and stuff, so for sure. And we get into a little bit more banter about, you know, the government, which Wooth Wo- Worth, he finally pipes up. But before that... Hey, guys, I'm here. Luke totally just shuts Jason up, which is great. Did you catch that part? Uh, yeah. Kit's like, what do you suggest, Jason? Before nephew could, before his nephew could answer, Luke raised a hand to stop the discussion. Our situation is this. Jason, Jason, just shut up. Well, yeah. Adults are talking. 
But yeah, I mean, in, in a way, he's. I, I think. I think he's not a hundred percent sure what Jason is like going to necessarily say anymore, mm. and we'll get into that more in the next chapter. But um, yeah, he kind of cuts cuts the banter here, and and gets to the point. But you know, Worth does sort of uh, cut in here. All the more reason we shouldn't care what the government thinks. Put on your tinfoil caps. They're clearly not interested in what's best for the galaxy. Strain meaning we are. That's what you're saying, isn't it? So again, the, the, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip ahead because I, I don't need to read all the dialogue here. But it, it, it is a fine line that they walk. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So we're we're effectively looking at this from from a standpoint of do we feel as Jedi we are better suited to guide the galaxy? Do we think we're better? Do we think we're more right? Which is, coincidentally, what got them in so much trouble. Because they they got so arrogant that they failed to see true wisdom, and they let, you know, Palpatine basically destroy everything that had been put together. Well, you are just simple-minded Jedi, you know. (laughs) Well. Can't expect much of you. You're like guinea pigs. You know, what's interesting about the Sith is they've been wiped out multiple times. And we and, keep uh, coming back. And uh, you know, but, you know, you don't come back in any numbers. You're just like, ah, oh, we're just going to be two because the we, Jedi would totally kill us if we got more. So We yeah. don't need more than two. <laughs> we're, yeah. like, we're like Spartans. We can take out like 300 of you apiece. The Spartans had a funnel effect in a canyon. It's not you know, it, not lightsabers. We have lightning, Get out of here. <laughs> and we have clone troopers. That's kind of like a fun whole effect in a canyon. <laughs> Get out of here. Uh, okay. Oh, this invasion must seem like a grand to Kip as a grand crusade through which he can win the acceptance of even his most harsh critics. And I wanted to read that there. This is actually also a sentiment that you can um, put with Anakin. Mm-hmm. You know they kind of want to. They want to be heroes. They want to be seen as this heroic figure because they have romanticized the Jedi in such a way that they feel that that's the attitude that they should have. But obviously, that's that's vanity. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and although I don't truly believe in 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 all in like fearing as much as you know the the old Republic Jedi did. Of you know the dark side and, and everything else, um, it is important to not be uh, led by mm-hmm. your vanity and your pride because it can lead you into trouble. And by the way, we did kind of skip something big here. Um, Kip had actually been possessed. Or did I? Mm. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, very, very. Yeah, and very they glossed over this so quickly. <laughs> yeah, like it was it's really nothing. weird. And I. Obviously, I'm not as versed as you are with the book. Well, here's the thing. I, so I, I didn't know of this well, before when, when I read Kip, it. Well, when Kip first showed up in our former book, I read up on him, and I don't remember really reading about this. Really? Yeah, and I mean, it was just like, you know, like Wikipedia or whatever, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't really remember seeing it, but, uh, but yeah. Seems go, a bit important. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's the thing. Um I'll just read the entire paragraph mm-hmm. because that's what we do here. The closest the edge, not surprisingly, free has seen develop. Okay, while still an apprentice, Kip had been influenced by the spirit of a dead Sith Lord. He'd stolen a super weapon and destroyed the planet Caridia, killing billions. Kip had worked tire- tirelessly to atone for what he had done, but had chosen more difficult and visible campaigns. As time went on, so more people would see that he was making amends. Does that sound like a like a plot from a video game to you? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna real. I'm gonna real quickly as we kind of chat about that a little bit, kind of look him up because, like I said, when I looked him up, I just don't remember seeing that, but I probably glossed over a lot because we weren't really really super going down the Kip the Kip route. But yeah, that's big. Yeah. I mean, literally Kip's killed billions. Yeah. Which, again, can you really blame him for that since he was, in a way, I mean, they don't quite say it, but possessed. 
in a way. Yeah, no, I can totally blame him for that. It's yeah. good. Okay. Which is, oh, geez, well, man. Then I, he's I, worth I, an an, worse I, than Anakin. Yeah, it's I the must first have, thing, isn't it? I must have completely glossed over it's this. the first thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, he was exploited by the spirit of Dark Lord of the Force, uh, Exar Kun. Oh, he was, really? Interesting. I didn't realize he was a Jedi uh, controlled by him. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Under Kuhn's guidance, Duran stole the Sun Crusher super weapon and embarked upon a vendetta, destroying several Imperial targets and unwittingly killing his own brother in the process. Only after Kuhn's influence had been banished did Duran begin a long quest for absolution, which led him to become Luke Skywalker's most and don't read on because he'll spoil stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Can you believe that crap? Yeah. Well, they don't mention the billions in that, though. The billions. The billion, 100 billion million. So let's go ahead and yes. uh, rock through the rest of this chapter so we can also very briefly talk about chapter four. You get about two minutes for chapter four, correct? <sighs> I think we're over the limit anyway. We'd better only Maybe. give it two minutes. Uh, let's see here. It's premature to speak of any attacking of any attacking of the Yuzen Vong. Jason is right. We cannot stand against them alone. Our job right now is to prepare for the worst and learn as much about the Yuzen Vong as we can. We have a good we have good news. We have to have good and useful data the New Republic can use to plan defense or an offense. Our role here as guardians and our skills can allow our role here as guardians. And our skills can allow us to scout out the threat. Once we have good intelligence about to use Vong, we can uh, you know, plan about stuff. Over the next week or so, I will give you assignments. I'll be sending you into danger. Dangers. I cannot even guess at knowing. I hope all of you will return unhurt, but I know that will not happen. So basically, like I'm going to send you into danger. You might I'm killing die. Some of you. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I know that some of you are going to die. Well, I, while the outside world may be be divided against us we cannot afford to be divided against ourselves if we do not stand together we will be torn apart and with us will fall our galaxy end of chapter what do you think of that chapter very good chapter so very nice good. to finally have something centered around the jedi order because we haven't had one since the first chapter for sure of the first book so yeah definitely definitely so yeah no it was really good to see some jedi stuff I, I like that. Okay, so the next chapter is one, two, three, four, five, about five full pages. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna gloss over it because to be honest with you, like a I didn't like them killing Chewie. Yeah. Okay, we've already established that. I don't think anyone really does. No, and the further remembrance of this, the furthering that sort of you know way of thinking, just kind of irritates me a little bit. But, you know, we do introduce uh, Alegos a claw. Alegos claw? A Lego claw? Yeah, I guess. Uh, a Kamazi. Legolas claw. <laughs> <laughs> well, the gist of this is Leia is um, essentially going to go on a mission to the Outer Rim. Uh, and uh, let's see here. Eligos is a senator, wasn't he? I believe so. I believe so. Was he wasn't one of the ones we talked about in the previous chapter, was he? And then I'm just forgetting. No. Uh, let's see here. Well, the, he is a Kamasi. Yeah, yeah, and a senator. There we go. So the big thing about this is Han actually wants to speak to the Kamasi. Because their race uh, does something sort of interesting with memories. That was my only part. That was the only part of the chapter that I actually enjoyed. That yeah, it was, was interesting. It was an interesting thing. So they 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 can take like big memories, bigger memories, or um, particular tragic memories. He tells a story about the first time he had to use a blaster and killed three people. And then, big surprise, they were stunned. <laughs> yeah. Well, pers- he also talks about perspective, perspective but. Yeah. But in, in the whole of this, he, he basically they bring up that Han is actually trying to like try and get rid of this memory. And the <sighs> Kamasi <laughs> uh, 
have this ability to essentially share their memories amongst their people, thus... And some Jedi as well. Yeah. And thus sort of taking the burden away from one person. So they they spread the burden out a little bit. But Han was... socialists. (sighs) Yeah, socialists (laughs) with memories. But Han was basically like thinking, oh, you can take this memory away, which they can't. Uh, And he, again, he's still mad about Chewie. And there was like the whole part was like, I saw him. I saw him like disintegrate. And he was black and then his bones were white. white, And then they were black again. Which obviously wasn't a description in the first book. And then so... uh, (sighs) Elagos. Quick (laughs) reference. Pause. Uh, you know, basically starts talking to him about perspective and like sometimes basically the brain can make up the deficiencies in what you see. Um, a big so, surprise, he eventually ends up pissing off Han. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Han's, again, apparently they're bringing back the boiling point Han instead of just like letting it go like it kind of did in the in the first book. But... um you know, he, he, he tells his, his blaster story, and they were stunned, but he was sure that he killed him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and Han seeing this with Chewie, he didn't really see that. Right. It was something that his mind has put together to sort of torture himself with. So he's got some issues here. Question is, is he going to still hold this all against Anakin? I don't think so. I think he's made peace with... Well, okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Right. If I were writing this book, I would say no, but because if I'm not... If you were writing this book, there wouldn't be a chapter four, though. <laughs> well, yeah, if I were writing this book, it probably wouldn't be as interesting to people because I'm a little bit too even keeled, I think, for that, for drama, dramatization. But anyway, um, yeah, Han... It, it, Elagos does kind of make him angry with something he says. Maybe we can find that and just kind of like... Uh, yeah. What do you... Uh, oh, yeah, here. I'll just read this. Uh, he saved your son in Chewbacca's eyes. Anakin saved you by piloting the Millennium Falcon to safety. Yet one more time, Chewbacca saved you this time through your son. You don't know that now, but you will come to see it. That is the truth. When you relive this memory, think about it. As noble a hero as Chewbacca was, he could not have had anything but joy in knowing you survived. To think about... Anything less demeans him, mm-hmm. and this is what this is what angers Han. Basically, thinking that logic you know, angers Han. <laughs> well, who who are you to tell me what Chewbacca, my friend of forever and ever, would think? And uh, who are you to you know tell me that I'm demeaning his memory? So, and he does have a bit of a point there. No, he's complete. Well, no, the, the Elagos is completely yeah. right. I mean, yeah. what he's saying is completely true. Yeah. Um, but Han's just so hurt over the loss that he can't see the truth in front of his face. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, you know, I, I don't really want to, I don't really want to do too much with this. Yeah. Uh, but basically and Leia's leaving. <laughs> yeah. Leia's leaving, you know, Han barks at C3PO to get him something and yeah, C3PO get it for him. And we're done. Well, Elagos <laughs> basically does say at the end here, you know, I can head out to the rim on my own. But Leia says, no, I need to go. Even that deep in grief, Han's right. I want to stay. All of me wants to stay, but I have to go. Others can't, so it is up to us to rescue them. Han can take care of himself. He'll have to. Harsh. <laughs> well, but it's true. I mean, you know, we're, we're we're dealing with a lot more than the loss of one person. We're potentially dealing with the loss of everything. So you got to, you got to, you know, got to let it go. So that was your favorite chapter of the book? Very much so. It was filler. And and like I said, I, I'm kind of done with the whole Chewy thing. I, I just, I get it. I understand. You know, I've had losses and everything, but, you know, it's just. They ruin the potential of seeing. Chewy clothesline Yuzen Vong. Uh, ripping their arms out. Yeah, Chewy against the Yuzen Vong would have been glorious and they just ruined it. Yeah, well, it, it was a choice, you know, and the choices that are made, you know, it, it well, happens. I can say so. the writer of the first book must be related to Ryan Johnson. Must be. Well, Chewy's, Probably his dad. Chewy's still alive in canon, so yeah. we can at least take solace That could have that. been a hologram. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Snoke! So anyway, um, yeah, I, I, the the first chapter we read very interesting. Again, you know, a lot of 
cool Jedi stuff. Too stiff, man. But definitely, uh, definitely a beacon for trouble, though. We've got a lot of young, young people here who have a lot to prove, and no wisdom. <laughs> yeah, it could be the detriment. So, very interesting. But we'll get more in the next chapter. Chapter six? five. 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 Okay. What was our name for chapter four? Oh God! Whiny, why? whiny, whiny stuff. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, so we'll be back with chapter five on our next episode. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed everything here again. Uh, hit the Facebook up if you want to chat about the chapter. We'll read whatever you have uh, to give us on the podcast if you'd like. Send us an email, tcplanpodcastgmail.com. Check out the Patreon. And you guys have a great rest of your week. We appreciate you stopping by. And as always, may the Force be with you.